Okay, welcome back everybody for the second installment of what was happening in Kenny Bunk history around the end or beginning of the new year. <laughs> Once again, this is me, Cynthia Walker. Um, I'm the director here at the Brickstore Museum sitting right across the street from the Unitarian Church where the uh, wild blueberry ball drops from the steeple um, at 9 p.m. if you're an early bird and midnight if you are uh, just waiting for the end of the year, I think as we all are. In yep. <laughs> Joining me, um, because it is uh, always a time for family on New Year's, is my sister, Catherine. I don't Hi. think I said it in the last round. Uh, Catherine, or I did say this, Catherine is uh, tuning in from California but I didn't mention that we were twins. So if anybody was confused uh, the last time, <laughs> I will just acknowledge that, that that's why we look alike. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, to get started, Catherine is gonna use Google's random number generator and choose a year for us. And we're gonna go on a search through our digital or digitized archives here at the Brickstore Museum. All right, give us our first number. All right, first up is 1849. Nice. This is a really good year. I'm going to share my screen. And we'll get our faces off of here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then oh, I'm going to shut that so I don't get confused. Uh, okay. So 1849, I think I have one here. Um, yes. So Charles Barry, uh, this is my favorite year. Charles Barry uh, was a, he lived here in Kennebunk and he was a ship captain. And he sailed around the uh, world, mostly delivering ice. I sound like I'm obsessed with ice this evening. He was mostly de <laughs> uh, delivering ice to India. So he would leave from Boston and then stop in Savannah, most likely, and then sail around the world to get to India. And um, most people have a hard time believing, but it's true that the ice lasted all the way to Calcutta or somewhere like that, that he was dropping it off. So what he did is he wrote um, letters almost every day of his travels to his wife, Sarah. And this one uh, is from a typewritten script of his obviously handwritten letters that we have here at the museum. And his granddaughter is in this picture behind me, Edith Barry. Um, so what he writes, January 1st, 1849. This is New Year's Day. Yes, the commencement of another year. And I have seated myself at my desk to wish dear, my dear Sarah and our darling child many, many happy new years. I could hardly realize this morning when I went upon deck, the sun just rising from the eastern horizon and the rosy light and mellow sky of today, so similar to every other of a tropical climate in the dry season, was really the beginning of a new year, but still it is the fact, and we have a fairly we have fairly commenced the race of another year and probably all of us looking forward with the same hope and the same confidence that all our bright anticipations may be realized through the present year as they have been through the last. That's kind of a nice wish, I suppose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so actually, I don't know where he was at this point, but obviously you can see his uh, December 31st entry. He has a oh. latitude and longitude. So if anybody is sleuthing out there, I bet you would be able to figure out where he was um, in 1849. <laughs> Oops, wow, somewhere in the middle of the ocean. It's all blue. Let's see. Oh, wow. Um, oh, it looks like, you're right. I put in the wrong la uh, longitude. <laughs> it's in the Bay of Bengal off the east coast of India. Oh, wow. All right. So that actually came true. I wasn't expecting to be that yep. close to India, but that's great. Mm -hmm. So he was near India. Um, you know, of course, this mention of a tropical climate, I'm sure to his wife, who's sitting in the January cold of Maine, mm -hmm. is not appreciated, but <laughs> he said it anyway. <laughs> All right, what is our next number for this session? Um, let's see, our next number is just 12 years later, 1861. Oh, nice. All right, let's take a Which look. I believe was the start of the Civil War. That's right. It was indeed. So, strangely, I am missing 1861. I have 1860 and 1862. Oh, you know why I think? That's why. Uh, let me see if I can find. Oops. Okay, well, we're going to go with uh, 1862 because that's the one that I can find. <laughs> that sounds fine. <laughs> this is once again going back to Andrew Walker's diary. 
So he has had a um, entry from 1861. I'm just not sure. It's probably not digitized yet. So this one's from 1862. We can tell this because there's a little handwritten note up here. It says 1862. Mm -hmm. uh, January 6th was the closest um, uh, day to the turn of the year. So his entry today um, for 1862, here's what was going on in Kennebunk. He says, John Moody, son of James Moody of this town, who enlisted last October in the 10th Regiment, Company A of Maine Volunteers, died at the Relay House near Baltimore on the 3rd, aged 21 years. His disease was typhoid fever. By the request of his relatives, his remains were sent home. This is the first volunteer that has died belonging to this town. Wow, that was an interesting yeah. one to read. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yes. I mean, I always just try to think of, uh, we did a Civil War exhibit uh, several years ago here uh, now, and <laughs> um, it's always just interesting to think of how the war impacted uh, the town. There were more men per capita sent from Maine um, than any other state in the nation at that point. So you can imagine how that impacted day-to-day uh, -day life here. All right, what's our next year? Let's see, our next year, apparently sticking in the 19th century, 1872. <laughs> 1872. Darn, another one that I'm missing from Andrew Walker. Okay, we're going to go to the newspapers and see if we can find anything. Hmm, which is also missing. We don't have 1872 yeah. newspapers. <laughs> <laughs> so we're uh, really lucky on this one. So I'm going to go with 1873 uh, is something from Andrew Walker that we have. That's close enough. Yeah. Okay, December, can you see that one? Okay, so December 30th, 1873, Wendell Phillips of Boston delivered a lecture at City Hall, Saco, last evening. His subject was the Lost Arts. A special train of cars for persons who wished to attend the lecture left the Boston and Main Depot at 7 o'clock. About 75 of us went to hear the noted Mr. Phillips. He was greeted by a full house at 8 o'clock when he commenced speaking and continued until 9.30. He said this lecture was never written and the original, <laughs> okay, and the original lecture was first delivered 35 years ago. <laughs> it was highly entertaining, at least to me. I arrived back at my home at 1030. Expense for the railroad fare was 50 cents. The lecture was 25 cents. So in all, Andrew Walker paid 75 cents for apparently a lovely evening on December 31st or December 30th, <laughs> 1873. <laughs> Interesting. I wonder, so if anybody knows what the lecture uh, or subject, the lost arts is, yeah, um, be curious from to hear. Wendell Phillips of Boston, hmm. should take a look at that. <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting to find out. <laughs> uh, all right, let's do uh, one more for this, this session. All righty. So let's see, we're moving, okay, into the 20th century, 1948. 1948. Okay, so we've hidden another snag, like I said, with <laughs> 1942 Sorry. that was picked, I think, in the earlier session. Uh, we do have 1940s newspapers, but they are not digitized. So if oh. anyone wants to volunteer to help us scan those, you may come in. <laughs> That's, why don't you go 10 years earlier? Do you have 1938? 1938. I don't have that either. I have a 1918. Let's so go that, with that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that. Another... Or story, perhaps. Another, yeah. <laughs> All right. So this one, again, is from Mary Varney, who I said um, she was a lady who lived in uh, Kennebunk, who kept a diary for a really long time. Um, so she writes, December 31st, 1918, uh, four degrees above zero. It's fair weather. <laughs> uh, clouded up in the forenoon, and at 11 o'clock, it commenced to snow very hard and snowed all day long. Um, she says, in the evening, Alice and I went to the dedication of the new Goodall Mill. There was an entertainment and dancing. So the Goodall Mill, um, if anybody, you probably uh, have seen the date of 19 on, 1918 on the side of this building, but the Goodall Mill is the um, 
current uh, Lafayette Center, where Duffy's is and all the rest, the big brick building on the Malsum River. So uh, Mary, uh, in December 31st, 1918, was attending the opening of that building. <laughs> hmm. All right, cool. so that, let me stop share on here. So that concludes our second part of our journey through the past um, of Kenny Bung's history using our archives. I thank my sister for, for uh, helping me out in the exploration of uh, what was happening. And I just wanna remind everybody that the uh, ball drop is happening at midnight, obviously. So sign in a couple of uh, minutes before and the video will start probably about 11.55 right here on the channel you are watching. <laughs>